uh, next speaker uh, from Symbiotic EDA CEO Edmund Hamenberg. So today's talk is the future of open source EDA tool for FPGA and SOC. え、本日は FPGA と SOC 向けオープンソース EDA ツールの将来についてお話してくれるそうです。Okay, please start your presentation. Yes. Okay. Who is、uh, Symbiotic EDA? Symbiotic EDA is an Austrian company. We do open source tools.、Uh, our main product is Yosis, which is a synthesis tool for ASIC companies, but also for FPGA designers. The second product is tools, quality tools, to verify the quality of your digital design. Especially formal verification, not so much simulation. We do have formal verification IP. This is the reason why we are a member of Risk V. So if you have a Risk V core,、uh, you can use our verification IP, which proves that you implemented your Risk V core correctly. And we also do、uh, verification of AXI interfaces. This is our business side. What's the team?、Uh, we are、uh, a team of distributed, worldwide distributed engineers, 10 engineers, and we work via online system together. We are from the United States, Mexico, Europe,、uh, and Asia.、Um, we write the tools for digital circuit designers, and we sell support, and we also sell、um, development contracts. This is how we make business. So you see. An open source company which is working. I am doing open source software since the 90s, so I heard the arguments in the 90s、uh, don't use Linux because it's not commercially supported. Use Sun. So, who remembers Sun? Yeah. Okay, awesome.、Um, I am talking today about how to make chip design fun again. That's a challenge because I see a lot of <laughs> faces. Okay, let's try.、Um, what's the status of the industry? We got Cadence, Synopsys,、uh, and Mentor. Those are the big three. They cover about 80% of the market. And everyone who wants to do a chip probably has to use and has to license those tools. Uh, there is no way around about those three if you want to go 23 nanometers, you want to go 14 nanometers, 7 nanometers. These are the big guys.、Um, but we have a problem in the industry. It, the, the problem is consolidation. Big companies buy other big companies, and maybe in five years we are left with three silicon companies.、Um, the engineers at the universities they find chip designing not cool. They go to write apps, they go to Google, they go to Amazon.、Uh, success in software is much faster. So you go out, you write an application, you get some funding, and within two years you're a millionaire. With chip design, you, in two years you might get back your third version of your chip.、Uh, there's no way you can make money with chips.、Um, so the good students go for software. So, you chip design companies, you are left with the rest. That's a problem. So, how can we change that?、Um, the chip design per year decreases, fewer and fewer chips get started. We don't have that many chip startups. 
Um, chip design gets more costly because the tools, the masks are so f expensive that people really try to avoid any error. They try to not change anything. Don't rock the boat. That's the strategy of a chip company. Because if you make a mistake as an engineer, you are ha hang. Because it costs $10 million to write a new mask, to do a new tape out, waiting for three months to get back the new tape out. It's just a mess. So just imagine you would do a startup and you would say, okay, I write an app for Android, but I have to have the guarantee that I will have one million customers. How many apps would you have on your app? Not that many. Maybe the battery is running low. Okay, so the thing is, the industry, the chips industry is stagnant and it's a boring industry. Who agrees with that? One, two, three. Oh, not that many, okay. Maybe I addressing a non-existent problem. Okay, uh, learn, from, learn from Linux. Uh, with Linux, um, we have Python, we have uh, Git. We, fa companies like Facebook, Google, Amazon would not exist with open source. Those companies exist because we had open source in the 90s. Uh, and the open source principle dominated the full software industry. If you look at a startup, 80%, 90% of that infrastructure is open source. Open source is dominating the industry. Even Microsoft uh, is using the open source principle. Not for political reason, but for business reason. And the question is, why is that? The thing is, cooperation, openness, speed of innovation. If you don't have to wait for half a year to, to get a signed NDA, but you can download the application from GitHub, you can innovate much faster. And I think uh, this is the success the chip industry can learn from. And this cooperation also leads to the fact that all these companies are part of the Linux Foundation. Linux Foundation is about cooperation in the embedded world. And you don't have to do everything yourself. If you share the load to maintain the Linux kernel, then you do it. And those companies share the load of developing software in the way of open source. All, all those engineers cooperate very efficiently. Let's try that, maybe in the industry of chips. So what's the status with open source? Uh, we do have the application. A lot of open source applications exist. We have the operating system, Linux. We have the instruction set architecture, RISC-V. This is about RISC-V, awesome. It's the open standard, it's not open source, it's an open standard RISC-V. Um, some Implementations of the microarchitecture are open source, like the pulp um, from different universities. Some are commercial. But below that, like memory compilers, ALU, RAM, uh, cell libraries, transistor models, that's all property. It's owned by the fab, it's owned by the IP company, there is no open source. So if you are a university, you are not able to exchange those informations. What do we need to restart the industry? Open design components, like open source PDKs, uh, so that universities can share the designs, can share the GDS2 files, so that we can really have real innovation. Shim share commodity blocks, like analog, like a DLL, um, like uh, a band gap, uh, voltage reference, all those blocks, which are commodity, should be available freely as open source. Uh, the same like verification of RISC-V formal, we provide that because that's our expertise. We need open tools. The open tools need to be freely available for everyone and they need to be available as open source so that designers can adapt the tools to their own needs because those are smart people and they can, and they know their requirements best themselves so let's give them the source code and they can adapt it themselves. We provide open source tools. Yosis, a synthesis tools, is one of the chip tools which is used. Open Road is another project from DARPA. These are tools for designing chips. Um, but we also need new manufacturing. So um, if you have to pay, let's say, $50,000 to make a chip on an MPW mask, 
then no startup will do chips. But actually, there exists factories which can make one chip, which is of the size of a fingernail. And you can run that one uh, wafer, that 100 millimeter square wafer through the fab and can manufacture one chip. And you don't need a clean room because the clean room is just this. You can run from one station of your fab to the other station this container with your one millimeter, uh, 100 millimeter square wafer. And the cool thing is this fab can produce one chip. You can see here in the picture. And even cooler, that technology is developed in Tokyo. Awesome. So what will be the result if we have these open tools, open design blocks? It will be a new wave of applications of chips uh, in the volume of 100 to 100,000. So not a million to 100 to 100,000. Very much like the applications for your Android phone. Um, it will be tailored to individual needs. I don't know what the application will be because I'm not an application expert. I don't know the domain of IoT, aerospace, automotive. Those are the smart guys coming out from the university, making uh, some years of practice, and then starting with a new idea. Because they don't need $10 million to start a chip company. They just have their laptop, download the tools, design the, uh, the chip, send it off, get three chips back, test it, make the application, and off they go. Because they can manufacture maybe 10 or 100 or 1,000 chips, one by one. Awesome. So what is the status of the open source tools? We do provide open source tools for FPGA. Uh, so we have the synthesis, we have about 10,000 designers worldwide using our open source tools for FPGAs. Um, it's a very healthy community, a lot of IPs for free, so awesome. How about ASICs? Um, the situation is not that good, so we can have the synthesis tool, which is our tool again, there is placement and routing, but floor planning, power planning, and clock synthesis is still a missing tool from the tool chain we used. But nevertheless, um, two years ago, the first chip was manufactured, Raven, uh, exclusively with open source tools. And I have one of the 20 pieces here, the first open source silicon of the world. So you can do it. And it's running with 100 megahertz. It's a 32-bit RISC-V core. Uh, it has four kilobyte of SRAM and quad SPI memory. So you can run decent software on that. So, but the problem with that core is still, uh, we had to use the standard cells from the fab. Uh, the the I.O. pads were proprietary. The RAM compiler were proprietary. So we want to push further. Uh, that's the ASIC one, our current project. And this will use our own standard cells. It will use our own analog components. So to go, get away and really having our own IP from the bottom to the top, really, even having our own transistor models. So this is an alternative toolchain from DARPA, funded with 100 million US dollars, uh, running since one year. So they do have tools for power planning, do have tools for clock synthesis. Even DARPA is using our synthesis tool, Yosis, so mm, seems to be a good tool. But they don't pay us a dime, so... Mm. <laughs> uh, we try to integrate some of their tools into our toolchain, so this is something we want to do for 2020. So what are our activities in the future? We will continue to design analog blocks, digital blocks, uh, so that one time in the future we will be able to hand out the tools to students so that they just can make the chip without having to sign an NDA. And obviously we are limited by the money we have available, so we are not like funded uh, like Sci-5. We are self-funded, we invest the money we earned from our core business, so if you want to join, uh, that would be awesome. 
If you have some interest in the project, please contact me, ask me. I do have FPGAs here to hand out for free. So, for example, uh, the smallest FPGA board, development board, is of that size. And if you are, let's say, an FPGA hacker, uh, please come to me. I'll give you an FPGA board for free. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>